Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to turn your Raspberry Pi 4 into a powerful, feature-rich home router and ad blocking station with help of OpenWRT and AdGuard Home. Get your spare Raspberry Pi 4 ready, grab a tea or coffee and let's dive into it. Now, you might ask Yaroslav, how did you even come up with the idea of using Raspberry Pi 4 as a router? Aren't you a long-term supporter of OPN Sense? And my answer to that, yes, I am. I love OPN Sense. But OPN Sense hardware is not always at hand and may not be as portable and versatile as Raspberry Pi 4. If you take to the account that I have to travel with these devices to client sites or sometime with them in my backpack, fly to another country. Raspberry Pi 4 makes it extremely easy to switch between operating systems for testing purposes. Just swap an SD card and voila, you are in a completely different environment within a minute. OS boot times are also very impressive on this development boards. And oh, did I mention that Raspberry Pi 4 can route at near gigabit speeds? Well, yeah, it can. WireGuard VPN speed tops at around 700 megabits. OpenVPN at around 350, 370. And speed test, depending on your provider, tops at around 950 megabits per second. I even have a screenshot down here to prove you exactly that. So my download speed was 670 and the upload speed was 922. Now let me show you the diagram with my OpenWRT and Raspberry Pi 4 setup. And please keep in mind that I'm not going to be using internal Raspberry Pi 4 Wi-Fi as an access point because it's horrible. Short range one by one antenna, what could be worse than that? Instead, I'll use a USB 3 to Ethernet adapter that will act as our WAN connection. And then the internal NIC will be responsible for running two VLANs and to route the traffic from our external access point. I am by no means an OpenWRT expert, but this setup made me scratch my head a couple of times, so I decided to share my findings with you guys. This video will get you up and running with OpenWRT and Edgard Home on Raspberry Pi 4, but I won't go further than that. So this is the list of what I will show you. I will show you OpenWRT installation for Raspberry Pi 4. I'll show you how to install drivers for our USB 3 to Ethernet adapter. I'll show you how to install Edgard Home on our Raspberry Pi 4. And I'll show you how to make sure that our Edgard Home database survives reboots, because it doesn't by default. Now, here is the list of what I won't show you. I will not show you VAN or VLAN configuration. I will not show you how to manage firewall rules. I will not show you how to configure your external access point. And I will not show you anything related to the OpenWRT setup itself. There are tons of guides on the internet for that. With this small intro out of the way, let me actually show you how to install OpenWRT and Edgard Home on your Raspberry Pi 4. Now it's the time when you grab your Raspberry Pi 4, the USB 3 to Ethernet adapter. Mine is based on Realtek 8153 and the SD card to boot from. The first step should be really familiar to you if you ever used Raspberry Pi. We need to flash our SD card with the firmware. And I'll leave a link to it down in the description, but it is also on our website in this blog post. Let me switch to my other browser. And what we need is rpi4ext4factory.emg. Go ahead and download that, but because I already did, I'll insert my SD card into adapter and flash it right now. Let me close this down and let me open Raspberry Pi 4 flasher. 
You can also use Rufus for this or Balana Atcher. But if you want to use the same software, go ahead to Raspberry Pi website and download it for your operating system. So I'll choose the OS. And in my case, it's a custom OS. And here is our image, let's open it, then I'll choose the SD card. And just hit right. The image is very small, so it's not going to take a lot of time to flash it. Now it's going to verify the flashed image, and it's done. Let's close this down. And now we need to expand the ext4 partition. Because unfortunately, it's not done automatically for us. And to do that, I'll use gparted on Linux Mint. Choose the right device in the top menu right here, then click on your ext4 partition and resize it. Grab this bad boy, drag it over to the end, hit resize and hit apply. So the partition was resized. We can close the window now and eject the SD card. Now go ahead and pop it into your Raspberry Pi. And let's move on to our next step. At this point, if you turn on your Raspberry Pi, it will get the address of 192.168.1.1. And this brings a little irony to our setup. In order to install and configure our routing software on the Raspberry Pi, we need an already working router with an active internet connection. And if 192.168.1.1 is outside of your router range, you have two options. You can connect your computer directly to the Raspberry Pi, SSH into it, and with help of DVI, change the configuration file, which is right here, at CConfig Network. Or you could insert the SD card into your computer and use that to edit the file. And your end result should look something like this. So because my network has this range already, I'll connect my Pi to it and start configuring it. So let me show you how it's done. Okay, I just turned on my Pi. Let me switch to the terminal and ping dot one. It's already up on a network, which is great. Let's SSH into it. Yes, I want to accept that. Whoops, that's not right. So SSH root at, yep, so the password is empty. And let's assign the password first. I used a short and easy password for this demo, but you should definitely go for something long and complex because it's going to be your router. Remember that. And now let's use VI to edit our file. Let's see config network, scroll down to the LAN interface and press I. Now choose the right option. I don't want this here because I don't have IPv6 option gateway. 192.168.1.254 and option DNS. 1.1. Press escape to exit the edit mode. Now hit column and press W Q to write and quit. Now we need to restart the service. Network restart. Okay, great network was restarted and let's ping Google now. Yay, we have a working internet connection. Now with a working internet connection, let's install some packages. So OPKG, let's update the repositories first. 
Now let's install some software that I need on every one of my systems. It's going to be htop, iftop, tmux, and nano. Now let's install Lucy Nginx package to get a web interface for our OpenWRT. So opkg install Lucy SSL Nginx. Now let's enable Nginx so that the web interface starts along with the system. Okay. That's that. Let's check our network interfaces. And we have ETH0 and WLAN0. Now we need to configure our Ethernet to USB adapter. And for that, let's find the appropriate package for our adapter. So opkg list kmod USB net and star. Now find the appropriate package for your device, but I know for a fact that this one will work for me. RTL8152. So opkg install and then the driver package name. Okay, now when that's installed, go ahead and plug it into your system. Now when our adapter was connected, let me show you the interface list. And you can clearly see that it's been recognized up and running as ETH1. Now you can go ahead and configure it as your WAN interface. But as I mentioned before, I'm not going to show you how to do that. Instead, we'll go ahead and install our AdGuard home package. Now when it's been installed, let's tweak it a little bit. So first thing we need to do is to make a directory inside root directory called adguard. If I could type today, so adguard home. And now let's check the running services. Just type in service and press enter. And here is our daemon that we need to tweak a little bit. So just select it, use nano to edit it. Go ahead, scroll down and replace the working folder from TMP to root. If I could type today would be great. Let's say file and exit. We did this to keep our Edgard home database persistent between reboots. Because by default, OpenWRT keeps Edgard home database in the temp folder, which gets wiped out on the reboot. And it works fine with off the shelf routers because they don't have a lot of internal memory, but it's actually really bad for us because we're running this setup on Raspberry Pi and we have plenty of storage on our SD card to keep the database and all of the TXT files in it. So after the file was edited, we have to restart the service. Service at guard home restart. Okay, great. Now that the Edgard home is ready, let's go ahead and configure it. So first go to 192.168.1.1, accept the self-signed certificate risk, type in the super secure password you set up for your OpenWRT, go to network, DHCP and DNS, switch to advanced settings, scroll down, and find a server port option, change it to 553. That way we make sure that the default DNS server is not running on a default port and no client in our network is connected to it. Let's save and apply. And now let's configure the AdGuard home itself. So 192.168.1.1 port 3004 AdGuard home configuration. Here we need to specify the web port for our AdGuard home. I'll use 8080 and the DNS is 53. Please keep in mind that for the listen interface, you're going to have to choose all the interfaces and then filter down the traffic with your firewall rules. 
because Edgard Home doesn't have the possibility to use only few network interfaces. It's either one or all. Unfortunately, this was a limitation up to this date. So if you watch this video in the future and you know that this functionality was implemented, go ahead and mark down your interfaces you wanna use. And don't forget to also mark the local interface. Otherwise, OpenWRT itself will not be able to contact the DNS servers. Okay, with this covered, let's press next. For the username, I'll use random username. And for the password, I'll use random password. Hit next and next. Now Edgard is configured up and running. Just hit next and let's log in. So the username is random and the password is also random. Okay, so we have our Edgard running. Let's add some more DNS lists. So choose from the list, uh, spam 404, why not? As a test, let's check for updates. Lists are up to date. Okay, so I switched my DNS to this system in the background and let's go to msn.com to actually check if it's running. Okay, so let's refresh the statistics and 19 queries were blocked by our AdGuard home. Now let's go ahead and reboot our OpenWRT machine and let's check if AdGuard database survives the reboot. So we'll have to check that number of queries is not reset to zero and our filters have all the records. I think it should be up by now. Okay, it is. Refresh the statistics. Okay, it's all good, filters. All right, everything is in place. So just like that, you can have OpenWRT and Edgard Home running on your Raspberry Pi. That's it for this video. Please like, sub and share. If you're interested in helping out our channel directly, there is a PayPal donation link down below. Special thank you to all the people listed on my left. They are an active supporters of our channel and they help to deliver this content to all of you guys. Don't forget that we provide consulting services for the products you've seen in this video or all of our previous videos. And you can reach out to us via email, our Reddit community, or you could just simply send me a Reddit DM. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.